I will just move on to this one. See, today I told you anything and everything is run by a computer system. And computer systems have undergone a lot of revolutionary changes in the last 50 years, starting from first uh, main computers, mainframe computers to personal computers, from there to internet, and from there to mobile computing, and then to cloud computing, and other things that have happened in a uh, couple of decades. And every time that uh, moment has happened, then that has given a lot of opportunity both for professionals and also companies so to take advantage of new technology. So one of the new technology that we have today is called blockchain. And blockchain has a fundamental value proposition which is going to change the way we organize our business and government. Today I'll be talking about what is a blockchain and what are its properties and how each of these properties can be used on our day-to-day -day life and how every kind of institution like a startup to an existing company to government are actually taking um, advantage of this one. And then finally I will tell you uh, what is that you can do today so that you can take advantage of this blockchain technology. See, as I told earlier, see, whenever there is a new paradigm, a new opportunity opens up. For example, in 1970s, we had this mainframe computers, then actually it was uh, personal computers are invented. And that created companies like Microsoft, Apple and all. So they transformed us so that actually each and every person can have a computer and they can start actually using computers for their personal and professional purposes. So that actually created opportunity for developing software like Microsoft developed operating systems, then applications and other things. Similarly, okay, uh, Apple also created many products and services. So then actually from personal computers to we went to internet. So then that also created a lot of opportunity. For example, people can create websites and web applications that created another range of opportunities for everybody. Then also actually we meet from local systems. Earlier we had what we call on-premise computing where companies and institutions would have to buy computer sets computers and establish their own computer center and then do that. Then actually we moved to cloud computing and that released, I mean, that uh, brought companies like Amazon Web Services, and Google, Microsoft, Azure and other things. So that means every time there is a new opportunity, there are two things that would happen. New companies will come, new services will come, new opportunities will come. Similarly, new uh, chances will come for the uh, people to get jobs. Personal computers to mobile. Then in the last 10 or 15 years, now more and more people are trying to access uh, the internet through their mobiles, not their personal computers. And that is also creating a problem. One more related but slightly different is actually, see in the 1970s we were used to use the file system, that means the called fly, fly, fly system. They had a lot of problems like redundancy, losing data and all. Then actually we moved on to what we call relational database management systems. Some of the companies uh, which actually brought this idea called Oracle and all, they become a leaders in within the industry. So then actually people who started learning RDBMS, like Oracle Relational Database Management System, they not only created new companies, they also created new career paths and develop. So essentially, a new paradigm will create a new opportunity. And now one of the greatest opportunities is created today is actually blockchain. So blockchain, what is it doing actually? It is moving us from centralization to decentralization. It is like the way uh, RDBMS moved from flash file to relational databases. Uh, internet actually mobile mode our activities from personal computers to mobile and cloud computing moved our files from local system to the cloud computing and personal computers I mean, internet moved our activities from personal computers to internet and similarly personal computers moved our activities from mainframe blockchain is actually moving uh, our activities from centralization to decentralization okay so are there any question at this point of time okay no question okay i will just move on so, uh, so blockchain has certain following features. Uh, the blockchain is actually decentralized. The idea of decentralization is new, but then actually it is deep because the first time the technology has brought this capability of decentralizing. See what it actually decentralized would mean that to organize an activity today, the main paradigm is centralization. That means if you have uh, to establish colleges and all, there are centralized universities of our uh, institution like AICT, UGC, which actually control everything. Similarly, if you want uh, to create money and control man and the economy, then you have institutions like Reserve Bank of India and the Central Ministry and all. Similarly, if you want to administer a country, then you have central government and state government. This pattern of organizing things is called centralization because the central authority which will decide and dictate everything. Decentralization is opposite of that. That means every participant has equal right, uh, equal participation and equal right in everything that they do. Okay. 
So that is called decentralization. One example of decentralization is actually the blockchain technology, which enables you to create nodes. And each node is independent of each other, but still have equal power and equal access to whatever that is created. And secondly, it is distributed. What it means is actually across the world, the whole contents are distributed. It's called ledger and ledger is available at any part of the uh, any part of the world as long as it is connected to internet and the third feature is immutable that means once written or once created these documents cannot be tampered with that means they cannot change and transparent anybody everybody in the world whether he is, is an outsider if you just have an uh, internet connectivity you can see whatever the transaction that have happened for example now uh, you probably know this uh, blockchain uh, enabled uh, currency called bitcoin it's called cryptocurrency now in the cryptocurrency world actually transaction happened based on your public and private address now if you know the public address you can just go to what we call the blockchain um, bitcoin explorer and see what are the transactions that have happened on that particular uh, address so this is actually a, a new paradigm which will help us to build government institutions or other colleges or other things so that actually everybody will become transparent and move on and because of this nature, there is no need for a central authority. That means you don't need bank. For example, Bitcoin is not given by any government, nor it is not controlled by any bank. You can make peer-to-peer -peer payment. That means I can pay directly to your public address, and you can actually access or see that uh, transfer whether it's happened or not using your private key. So there is no central authority. For that means the transfer. I mean the <clears throat> Uh, transfer of money or funds becomes cheaper and it doesn't cost you any commission to be paid to the bank. Okay. And the, all the peers in order to verify the information stored in the blockchain ledger. That means I can see your account balance and I, somebody can also see another, uh, uh, anybody's balance anywhere using that public address. That doesn't mean that they will come to know who you are. There is no question of privacy and all because all these pub, uh, public addresses, they are kind of a cryptographic um, addresses so that there would be any revelation of about the person. All that they can see is the address, but they cannot make out who the person is. So it gives what is called something of a, a pseudo anonymity. That means you actually are available, but your complete information is not available. And bottom line is it's highly secure and reliable. That means once written, the file will not be lost anywhere because there is no kind of a hacking. There is no kind of a I mean, uh, the file being destroyed or getting deleted. So being a tempered proof ledger, blockchain technology offers many possible use cases for business across all the industries. So let us, okay, are there any, any questions at this point of time? Okay, no, okay. Okay, now we will look at the uh, Indian government actually. Now I, I just told you that uh, we can uh, use uh, this for across all the industries. Let me look at the government. So the Indian government has already started using blockchain for government, I mean, government purposes. Look at this. What they say is actually more trust because more efficiency. That means now uh, the blockchain technology gives you a tamper proof and immutable documentations or documents. Now it means you can trust them. You don't have to depend on somebody's signature and all the network itself will take care of that. And it's immutable. That means there cannot be a forgery that somebody cannot change a document once it is created because it is uh, been available for everybody. And drive more transparency and greater trust in transaction. That means you don't have to worry uh, regarding the authenticity of the uh, authenticity of that particular transaction. If somebody has transferred, it is hundred percent true. There cannot be any forgery. There cannot be any misleading transactions and all. Okay, because of this, every kind of institution from an enterprise to a startup to a big company, they have realized and they have started using that for many things. For example, Indian government is actually using for KYC authentication. Today, if you want to create an account in a bank and all, there is something called know your customer. So normally it is done using your mobile number and your Aadhaar card to give as a proof of this. And now there is possibility actually you, somebody may actually give some kind of a, a wrong document and all. But since applied blockchain actually um, is a technology where you cannot do this, it becomes very easy to use blockchain enabled technologies made for the KYC. Document verification. This is also interesting because today probably you know that the central government has started using a service called DigiLocker to deliver your marks cards and all. Anybody who is passing examination will getting his marks are directly delivered to a DigiLocker. Now because DigiLocker is actually a document depository, then you can actually verify that document because you know who has issued that because they are done with a digital signature. 
and validation of financial transactions. So if somebody has paid money or somebody has collected money or somebody has paid tax and somebody has collected commission, all that can be actually verified using that. Record management like land records and other things. And healthcare. Now that Indian government has many other link, for example, Ayushman Bharat and all. Now that patient was may, will be made to visit different hospital, different specialities and all those things. Then actually it will help them to use that one there. Supply chain is another one where actually you can come out to know the authenticity of your product. For example, if you are using a green product like a milk or a, or a vegetable or a fruit, then using blockchain you can actually establish the authenticity so that actually it will be actually a true product. Nobody, you are not buying an organic pro, I mean, a, a product which has used manure to understand I mean, thinking that it is an organic product. Okay. So any more questions at this point of time? No, no problem. Then we will move on to the next one. Okay. So one of the creations of <coughs> the blockchain is called smart contracts. So what are smart contracts? Using the immutable and transparent nature of this one, it is possible that you can create a document which is called smart contract, which is actually an agreement in the real world. That means assume that you are actually taking a house for a rent and then you have to enter an agreement with your the landlord and you are the rentee. That means that agreement will say that the owner is, the landlord is ready to give you a house for say one year uh, and normally you enter an 11 month agreement. So normally today it is written on a bond paper and people with some signatures and uh, witnesses are done. So now if you are using a blockchain, you don't need paper. Okay. You can just enter it as on a blockchain and do that one. See, for example, it is trustless. That means you don't have to depend on anybody and it can actually, the code will give that this one. Guarantee security. That means nobody can tamper with document. Okay. So this is the fundamental thing and using this, there are many products. Okay. So for example, if you look at this, now there is a company called uh, uh, Bust IQ. They are using it for medical applications. That means there are a lot, for example, they contain personalized health plans and other relevant details for individual patients. See, the medical information is slightly personal and slightly private because you don't want everybody in the world to see that. You want only the doctor should be seeing, not even the patients or the other health uh, professionals. Now to do that actually, you can use a smart contract where actually you can code uh, the such a restriction that only doctors can see, only a specialist can see. So smart for using smart card, you can do that. So there is another application like real estate, that means the land and houses. Now that actually can use, for example, the company like Propy is using that. As I told you, the Indian government here actually, where is this? Okay. Indian government is also the using for the record management. That would also means actually land record and other things. Okay. So one of the another uh, de technological development that is happening in the recent is called Internet of Things. That means now we had Internet of Information the earlier way, where actually people used to be using that computers. Now then we are actually using the same Internet to connect to smart things. For example, TV in our house can be connected to your mobile, which in turn can actually be connected to your car. Okay, so that is how it is. And our actually a um, fridge in your home or a remote can be connected to your mobile. So this kind of a world where actually you connect things and make accessible from distance is actually called Internet of Things. Now, there are applications of the smart contracts or the blockchain even in the areas of um, the Internet. For example, look at this, this company. Okay, so now actually what this company is doing this, okay. It is actually using internet for, um, uh, I mean, blockchain for internet security and all. Okay. Um, and there's another company called XH, that's the extended age. And look at here what they are doing. Services using the blockchain, so let's secure IoT, deliver the access centers, and data security using the blockchain. Okay. So the second application area for uh, the uh, blockchain is actually IOT because we have to trust those machines, the information coming from them, the information that is captured in them. And for example, if you have installed a security camera, then how do you ensure that information is authentic? So that is taken care by blockchain based software. 
money transfer. This is one of the financial requirement because people earn money, they are in different locations, they want to send money back to home or they want to purchase things and all. Today there are many frauds that would happen on the internet because actually uh, there are phishing activities and all. But now using blockchain you can avoid that. Look at this. There's a company called Circle. So now they are using actually this uh, USDC and actually Euro coin. So these are uh, the creation of blockchain. So in, in blockchain technology, there is an idea called tokens. Tokens are valuable things. For example, Bitcoin is a currency. That means it's a cash token, I mean a currency token. Similarly, there are other uh, kind of a tokens. And these companies particularly using uh, the uh, blockchain to make those uh, applications, mean, those uh, uh, transactions very safe. Look at this actually. Every month, Circle handles about 2 billion cryptocurrency investment and exchanges. So now this is another application. And the another advantage of cryptocurrency and blockchain, they are not restricted by a national boundaries. For example, you can make a crypto payment to a person, say, in Australia, okay, because he's on the network. So suppose you want to make a payment on the fiat currency like rupees, and then you should convert your rupees into American, I mean, as Australian dollar and pay that. Now the applications of the I mean, uh, blockchain is unlimited. You can go, for example, now in India we have Aadhaar and all, but the circle fund actually can use for personal identity. Look at this. Okay, now they can use credentials. For example, assume that you are going out of India, then they will check for the passport and other things. But suppose you are you do not have a passport, even the other, and now it is possible that actually you can create your uh, self identity. Okay, it's called sovereign identity. Each individual can create, and they can verify the document using those identities. So that is the, another application of the this one. And one more application they call Civic into Web3, where actually multiple credential, one human-centered identity. You may have one passport, you may have one driving license, you may have one identity for the college. But then actually what they are trying to do is they want to integrate all this into one thing and make a civic path. That means civic means actually civilized, civil uh, citizen kind of a thing. Okay. So uh, let me stop for a minute and check are there any questions at this point of time? Okay. Any questions? If there are not questions, actually, I continue this presentation. See, now logistics, that means moving items from a place to another place, for example, manufactured food, I mean, items should come to the uh, retail destination where people will purchase. Similarly, raw materials should move from the sources back into the factory and production unit. Okay. So companies like DHL, actually, they use this uh, for the uh, blockchain so that actually they can have a secure, that means they can ensure that the items they have sent only are coming. Nobody has actually exchanged them and other things, right? So now look at this blockchain, digital retail in 2020. That's actually we are already reached 23, but this was a paper which was published earlier. Similarly, Musk. IBM to discover, discontinue learning a blockchain enabled trade platform. Okay. So they are also trying this kind of a activities over a period of time. Okay. So now let us look into the Indian government activities. Actually, look at this government. Indian government seems to have made um, its own effort. I, I already told you here. Where is that? Uh, okay. Central government. And now I will show you the document which says that. Uh, Indian government has a strong policy in this and they are actually using lot many uh, applications in the blockchain. The blockchain, the Indian strategy. Okay. Now if you look at this, they have a policy like Aadhaar and all. Now, now what is more important is actually they have some, let me go to the page number 31. Yeah, look at this. They have nearly about 47 different applications. For example, land records, creating a, a new system for managed land records transfer using blockchain. So now 
what is they are doing is actually land record maintenance is also a big problem because there are too many claims on that, too many uh, mark cages on that and all. So whenever you want to buy a land or sell a land, it becomes a very tedious process for you to establish that you are the owner or you want to get verified that whether the person actually selling you the land or a property is actually the real owner of that. This all happens because they are using paper based documents and all. But now using the blockchain based documents, the Indian government has a project which actually converts your uh, sorry, <coughs> your land records into blockchain based. So once that is done, then they have become tamper proof, very secure and actually uh, fault tolerant. Similarly, now there is another application, look at this. Pharmaceutical drug supply chain. See, one of the problems today is pharmaceutical is there are many duplicates which are coming which nobody will notice. And you know, there is a lot of risk when you actually take a medicine or uh, take any prescription which involves a duplicate or a less than a I mean, less <coughs> regular uh, prescription and all. So, the, what Indian government is actually, the, uh, what is to overcome this issue of this counterfeit drugs means bogus or the uh, duplicate drugs. Okay, every country has done as per the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, are doing that. So, here is the okay. Well, Dawa, Dawa is actually uh, drug authentication and verification application based on GSI standard one for drug and tracing and traceability. Since blockchains give you an ability to verify the document from the time of their creation to the final destination, they are using blockchain to do that. Okay. So land records, the pharmaceutical things. The third one is actually super certification, anti-fraud identity intelligence. That means this is needed, for example, somebody gets a degree certificate and how do you ensure that it is fake or thrown or somebody gives you an identity or somebody gives you a bank um, uh, bank transaction letter. So now how? So that becomes a big problem whenever you go for a job or whenever you go apply for a bank loan and other things. So what Indian government is actually doing is it's called super certification. Okay, means of verifying a paper based certification is fallible. Look at here, it says fallible for manipulation. That means somebody may add one zero or somebody may make some corrections in the numbers and okay. That means that's the reason actually university UGC has done this. What they do actually identity this one identity miss uh, this one and document temperament all these are actually uh, will be overcome using this one look at this super certificate okay so let me come back to the chat and see if there are any specific questions on this okay okay great uh, I think everything is understood fine then let me move back to this one. So the first one is land record management, second one is actually the pharmaceutical, third one is the super certification. So that way government has actually nearly about 47 projects. Okay. What is this one? The next one is actually. Okay, immunization. Today recently we had this problem with this pandemic. Okay. Now that immunization and um, like vaccination, there are also chance that somebody may get a vaccination which is not very pure, which is not which is not actually a fake and all. So to overcome actually they have this immunization and supply chain, building a new immunization infrastructure for India, unified and enhanced by blockchain. So that is another project they have taken. So look at this current vaccination, uh, this one, which one, uh, logistic system. So it's very interesting to note that actually there are a lot many projects which are happening uh, by the Indian government on the blockchain. Then another one actually cheat funds. See, financial fraud is a big thing. For example, every other day or every other uh, month you see a report in a newspaper, somebody has collected a lot of funds and ran away with that money and all the investors and all the people who are cheat uh, fund the people who have taken subscription and all they have lost of money. Okay. So now they are doing actually uh, in a cheat fund scheme, a group of individuals come together. The existing process is actually paper based and what these people are doing actually, look at this. Next one is actually insurance, medical and automotive. Okay, that also they are taking care of that. Okay, so any specific question at this point of time, I'm willing to answer. So what I'm trying to do today is actually blockchains 
features blockchain as a transformational technology which is going to change the way we operate or organize our activities so everybody is appreciating the decentralization tamper proof immutable nature of the blockchain technology and taking we are starting taking advantage one of the greatest example which is known across the world is actually called cryptocurrency created by bitcoin but thereafter there are many companies like ethereum and others who have been using blockchain for many other applications while blockchain is actually a general technology bitcoin is one example or one implementation of that whereas it has too many applications wherever you need decentralization wherever you need trust wherever you need tamper proof documentation wherever you need immutable documents and all blockchain can be used so understanding the value of this value proposition every company everybody in the society has started using blockchain technology so what i showed you is like two examples of different companies one is using for the real estate and the another one is actually using for the um, <coughs> medical case but then there are application like iot where actually you can use iot I mean blockchain to ensure the security and the safety of the data in the uh, in the internet uh, I many iot things okay but beyond that governments also have started using and indian government is one of the leading government in the world which has taken uh, up on I mean, this one uh, what was uh, blockchain as a, a very powerful technology they started in fact they have a website called uh, I mean, they have dedicated website for the uh, this one look here Okay, now look here, and they have created um, uh, blockchain products and all. Look at this certificate chain, uh, document chain, drug logistic chain, profit chain, and all. So <clears throat> that is the initiative they have taken. Very few countries in the world actually have done this. And uh, look at this verification process, central board. So now every mask card actually is directly delivered to your what we call um, are the digital locker. And now then they are taking care so that using blockchain they can ensure the both authenticity and the uh, the correctness of the documents. Any more questions from anybody? Okay. If not, actually, okay, I just come to the the uh, end of my session. The blockchain is a new institutional technology. That means it gives you an organizing principle which help you to create a new category of business where actually you don't have to depend on central authority you don't have to depend on the third party for the trusting documents or signatures you can depend entirely on the technology called blockchain which will help you to create documents where are immutable that means nobody can change once it is signed okay and secondly they are transparent every participant or every node can actually verify it anytime okay and they are distributed that means the copies are available in multiple locations that means no, no, never ever it happens that all the documents are lost. That will not happen. Using this principle, there are many applications like smart car and track and all. They can also be used extensively for different purposes. For example, even if you are in agreement, enter an agreement with a company for EMI payment, then that can be written on a, a smart contract. In future, belongs to those who built enterprises on the blockchain. So that's the end of my presentation. And if you have any specific question, you can ask me.